What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's title we're going to talk about UFC 5, more importantly 7 things that would drastically improve UFC 5. Now just a little disclaimer, while I am a big career mode guy, I'm not going to be talking about career mode at all in this video. This is just my thoughts on how, not so, many, so much basic things, not things that would take a day, but just things as a general consensus that in my opinion would improve UFC 5 drastically and make the player experience just that much better and make it a more fun game to play. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into the list. Like I said, seven things that I believe will drastically improve UFC 5. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree, disagree with this list? So, let's get into it. Number one is an online overhaul. A new ranking system, no preset weights on timer, and a player rating system. Now... I think the no preset weight on a timer, we can all agree on that's a stupid idea where you play and it's like lightweight for the next hour. It's stupid. Let us play in any way. If someone wants to play in lightweight exclusively, then let them do that. It's, it's, it's not up to you to decide when people can play what weight at what time with what fire online. It's bullshit. I think they're literally paying you and then limiting you. That is just, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. You're paying full price for the game. That's like getting a Call of Duty game. You pay full price and then, and then... 10 minutes in, they say, oh, actually, sorry, you can't use assault rifles now. You can only use shotguns. And then an hour later, sorry, you can only use assault rifles. Like, you can only use submachine guns. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Ranking system, from my experience, that sometimes you can be Division 7 and you'll fight a Division 20. They need to keep it strict. Three division difference is my uh, is my thought. If you're Division 1, the highest you'll ever fight is 3. If you're Division 20, the lowest you'll ever fight is Division 18. You've got 20, 19, 18. That's three divisions difference. So that is my thoughts on that. Um, I think that that just makes things so much better. The higher level players then are always fighting high level players. And then the final one for this online overhaul, this one may be controversial, but a player rating system to maybe get rid of those cheesers, those hackers, and, you know, maybe lower the chance of them finding a game to play. If someone's an absolute mad fucking cheese nut, then you can thumbs down them you can rate them as a a i don't know a cheese are whatever you know what, what, whatever it chooses to be um not a fun fight whatever just something like that i think would be better now of course this can easily be abused but maybe it resets every season maybe if someone gets a lot of complaints of cheesing or you know abusing the metal or whatever then maybe this up to the devs to look into it and say Okay, yeah, this guy definitely is. And then, you know, he doesn't get as, as, as many matchups. He struggles to find games. He only finds games against other low-rated cheesers. That's just my thoughts. But obviously, you might have... You, more likely, you're going to get YouTubers like Marshall Mine and Paroxys just abused with this. Or, you know, they're just going to get stuck with a bunch of cheesers because everyone is downvoting them because they're a YouTuber. That's just, the, unfortunately, the way UFC community can be. Number two is remove the star system and go back to the number rating system. The star system, in my opinion, I know, is very 50-50, and you guys may disagree with this one. I think the star system is shit. You limit yourself to only having 10 levels per fighter. They can either be half star, one star, one and a half, two star, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, or five. There, it's so restricted, it's insane. The prime example for me of this is the fact that Max and Volk, I don't know if Volk is a five star just yet, but chances are they're both going to be five stars, or Max was a five star while Volk was a four and a half. That is a prime example of why it doesn't make sense. While, yes, they had close fights, the last fight, Volk absolutely put that rivalry to bed and destroyed him. You can't have them rated near one another, and then you've also got that Max is then equal to three or four other featherweights, and then you've got seven featherweights, all four stars. It just, it's not a good system. I think it's stupid. I think it's shit. I think we need to bring back the number system. That makes so much more sense in everything, especially when it comes to, like, um, created fighters, which, by the way, they're not in this list either. I'm going to leave that for the career mode video. Um, I, that, that's just what, one of my biggest pet peeves about the game is the star system. It seemed cool, but the more fighters you get and the more high-level fighters you get, you realise that like it just doesn't make sense like the light heavyweight division back in the day would have been a prime example you could not have john jones as a five star and anyone else as a five star so that means dc is going to be four and a half star and no one else was near him so that then means every other light heavyweight is going to be between three and four stars and that's just it doesn't make sense so go back to the number rating system Number three, now this one I guarantee will be controversial because so many of you guys wouldn't have played the older games, and that is remove the grapple HUD. Bring in the analog, 
the analog turning transitions like in Undisputed. It makes the ground game harder, but also it makes it more rewarding if learned, and you actually have to understand how to use it. You cannot just read a grapple HUD that says half guard, full guard. You need to know which way you're transitioning. Also makes things smoother on the ground because you're not just holding it and you're seeing this, this awkward, clunky, shit transition. You can do that and you can pivot round and, and flow round whatever it's called um, on the ground. I think that that would be so much better. I don't like the grapple HUD. UFC 1 had that as well, the um, the turning of the analog, and it was so much better. Undisputed done it right as well. I don't like the grapple HUD personally. I think it's spoon-fed, it's shit, and while I'm not going to say casuals, it definitely appeals to people that are are now getting into MMA, which is great, but I think this is the better way to get them into it, to appreciate the ground game more, especially in a video game, but also in real life. That If, it, if it's this hard to learn in, in a game, how hard is it in real life? I think that would definitely... Um, bring a better experience to everyone online to offline players because the ground game is going to be fun, hard, but also very rewarding. Number four is a complete overhaul of the ground and pound. Add elbows, which I can't believe I have to say, um, from all positions, uh, full guard, half guard, top mount, posturing up, elbows, hammer fists, all of it. If you're like that, if you're if you're you know in like a let's say a half guard and you're you're wrapped up, shoulder strikes. Add TKOs if eating too many shots. Not everybody needs to just die. We need more impactful ground and pound shots. Wide open shots from stack guard should really fucking hurt somebody. And the ref should get involved and pull you off. Five or six. But if you drop someone and you get into the stack guard position. And you rain down four or five punches. The ref is going to stop that. If someone is just like this. And just getting their head plastered off that canvas. You shouldn't need to die for the ref to end the fight. Ground and pound is something that needs to be seriously looked at. Number five is a overhaul of the clinch. Now, I don't mind how they've done the clinch in this game, but use the turning analog, like I said, in the, gra in, in the ground um, part in um, round three, uh, not round three, sorry, in in uh, number three. Use the, the, you know, for all transitions, just use the right analog stick to turn it. You can use L1, L2, R1, and R2 to deny reversals, more advanced transitions. Using all that, you have so many more options. But also with the clinch, I don't mind how they've done it. it. The clinch flowed somewhat well, but I don't like how limited it is. Always the single collar. I want the Muay Thai. I want to be able to do single under, double under more fluidly. I want to be able to jump straight into a double under. I want to be able to jump straight into a Muay Thai clinch, have someone against the cage. I don't just want to have one hand here and just L, just kneeing them. I want to be able to get back in that Muay Thai clinch. I think the clinch definitely needs to be looked at. Um, it's super restricted, the fact that certain positions of the clinch are not available in the game. That says a lot. And yeah, I, I'm just not a fan of it. So I think overhaul of ground and pound, overhaul of clinch at, at, at four and five definitely makes sense. And, and the overhaul of the clinch, like I said, I don't hate it, but it's definitely not, it's definitely not um, realistic to MMA in my opinion. And the other thing for the clinch that I just want to say is when you break, I don't just want to pull back. I, I'd like to be able to push and, and, and do that or, you know, pivot to the side on, on the clinch. It's always just the only way to get out is walk backwards. Not a fan of that personally, but it is what it is. Number six, I think there's something we can all agree on, is bring back ragdoll KOs from UFC 2. It doesn't have to be as crazy as UFC 2. It doesn't have to be as wild, you know, where you uppercut someone off the ground. But for example, you can hit someone with a perfect one-two, and as they're falling, you could catch them with a hook, and the body and their momentum, that extra punch, is going to fall, is going to push them where that momentum of the punch is going. People really fold in UFC 2, like they really slump over. Even in UFC 1, they had it. Um, things like from UFC 1 as well, where they would stiffen up. Doesn't happen often, but like a perfect massive shot to the temple. People would stiffen up in UFC 1, they'd be stuck like that on the ground, out cold. We need those ragdoll KOs. We need that proper KO to, to feel like something. In UFC 4, it's very stiff. UFC 2, they need to bring back those ragdoll KOs. They need to bring back those different animations. And yeah, it's, it's just, I think ragdolls work better, especially when you get dropped, because the body, you see in real life, when people get dropped in, in MMA, the body almost shuts off for a second. So there is no controlled falling. The knees fold in on themselves. The arms do weird shit. You fall on your head. Like, I, I so much more prefer the the just the ragdoll in essence to uh, the UFC games and number seven is more thoughtful and realistic damage eyes swollen bad bad cuts that continue to bleed not just bleed when they're hit not just like jab bleed jab bleed look Nate Diaz where he comes out of his corner second they remove that shit it's just bleeding again I like that 
it makes it brutal. It doesn't happen all the time. Some nice elbows cut you open. Let that happen. Doctor and ref stoppages need to be a thing. If there's a bad cut here and it's bleeding in the eye, if the eye is too swollen, we need to see those stoppages so then people actually care about if their eye is damaged. People don't care. It's all about that damage bar. People literally only care about the damage bar and the stamina bar. That's all people watch in these games. There's no like, oh, my eye is swollen. I better be careful. No one cares. And I think that's, that's something that needs to be added for sure. And we need more damage and cuts in places, not just like perfectly placed cuts in certain places. We need very more unique broken noses, bleeding from the mouth, you know, various cuts where you can get them up here and you can get them on the eyebrow and you can get them under the eye. Like we need more realistic and under the eye is obviously going to cause that doctor stoppage. So I think we, we you know, more thoughtful and realistic damage that definitely needs to be taken in consideration for UFC 5. And a couple of honourable mentions, like I said, I'll mention career mode and creative fires in the future. Honourable mentions are bring back pride mode, because EA have the rights to pride and strike force. And also remove the shitty intro and outro choices for fighters. I don't like it. Seems like it's a huge waste of time, a huge animation waste of time. Seems like the creation of it was a massive waste of time. I don't think I've seen anyone say I lo they love this feature. It's fun at the start, but two years down the line you realise how shit it is. And that's just my opinions. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know, what are your thoughts? I, I think, I think to be honest, overall, these seven points, online overhaul, removing the star system, removing the grapple HUD, overhaul of the ground and pound, overhaul of the clinch, bring back ragdoll KOs, more thoughtful and realistic damage, and then, like I said, honorable mentions of pride mode. Now, don't get me wrong. The, over, the online overhaul is not something that I would... I think the timer especially, that needs to be fixed. The timer is was, was bullshit. That was the dumbest idea they've ever come up with. I don't know if they've still got it or not. I honestly have no clue. But the fact they had it for at least a year and a half is fucking ridiculous. Star system, I don't like. If they couldn't overhaul the ground and pound, the only thing I'd say is is add more more shots. If they can't overhaul the whole thing, bring back the elbows, bring back the hammer punches, and update the game as it goes. If they can't remove the grapple hard, fine, keep the grapple hard how it is. That one's not too bothered. I'm not too bothered. That's something I would personally love, but I know a lot of people wouldn't. So that's just my thoughts. But I think we can all agree on the ragdoll KOs, the more realistic damage, the online overhaul. And to be honest, I think a lot of you would probably agree with the overhaul of the ground and pound. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I think these are things that just, they're not even overly complicated. It's not like I'm saying like, you know, um, make it so my, my fighter can break his shin, or it's not like I'm, I'm saying, you know, like on, on the off chance my foot gets caught in the cage. I'm not saying like overtly crazy, unlikely shit that happens once in a blue moon MMA. I'm just saying things that are basic to the MMA experience uh, with the ground and pound, the clinch, the ragdoll KO, the realistic damage. These are just things that are basic to an MMA experience when it comes to video games. But like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.